Dr. Einstein, you are a scientist and must regard scientific progress as one of man's highest achievements. And yet it seems to many people nowadays that science and invention have brought human beings more trouble than good. Technological unemployment, international quarrels for the raw materials of industry, and finally the weapons of mechanized warfare. How do you think the discoveries of science might be turned from man's own destruction to his advantage? Science has provided the possibility of liberation for human beings from hard labor. But science itself is not a liberator. It creates means, not goals. Man should use them for reasonable goals. When the ideals of humanity are war and conquest, those tools become as dangerous as a razor in the hands of a child of three. We must not condemn man's inventiveness and patient conquest of the forces of nature because they are being used wrongly and, destruct and destructively now. The fate of humanity is entirely dependent upon its moral development. Exaggerated nationalism is an artificially created emotional state resulting from the necessity to be prepared for war. This exaggerated nationalism would quickly disappear with the elimination of the war danger. I do not believe that the unequal geographical distribution of raw materials must necessarily lead to war. As long as a nation has access to the materials which are necessary for its development, it can very well prosper. This is clearly shown by nations such as Switzerland, Finland, Denmark and Norway. I cannot help but wonder if this statement is not a bit too optimistic. Can one strive towards an international order founded on justice while on the other side of the Atlantic, brute force is strangling one democratic nation after the other? I am far from, from being optimistic. What I have told you is not a prophecy, but a statement of what must be done to prevent life on this earth from becoming unbearable. Everybody will agree that we are now farther removed from this goal than seemed to be the case ten years ago. This setback could have been avoided if the democracies had then shown the same solidarity and readiness for sacrifice they have shown now in this hour of great emergency. Will to sacrifice, solidarity and wise foresight, however, are most effective before the hour of dire necessity has arrived. May our America be spared such an hour through the resolute action of her citizens and statesmen. You have great faith in your chosen country, Dr. Einstein. I hope we may be worthy of it through all our acts and decisions and attitudes during these trying times when emotions often deprive men of ability to see things clearly. I believe that most Americans act like Americans. By that I mean that they are innately just, tolerant, and reasonable. But a time of crisis tests the democratic qualities. For example, with eight million naturalized Americans and four million aliens among us, we are challenged as a democracy to prove to ourselves and to the world that tolerance is not only an ideal, but a practical possession of all Americans. I believe that America will prove that democracy is not merely a form of government bound to a good constitution, but also a way of life supported by a people who have a good tradition, a tradition of moral strength. And the fate of the human race is more than ever dependent on its moral strength today. Thank you, Dr. Einstein, for your inspiring message to your chosen country.